Slaying the dragon. It's a term I use to uh, how to address fear in our lives. Uh, we all have thoughts that go through our mind. Uh, we get scared, and a little voice comes on and starts whispering, "You can't make it. This is gonna happen to you. Oh my god!" Uh, so the, the that voice that comes on and creates fear in our minds. And a lot of times, what we do to escape it is to um, distract ourselves with turning on the radio, watching television, reading a book, going to the movies, going out shopping, doing something other than confronting it. Now, all those things work, but the problem is that we never really confronted our fear and we ran away. So... <clears throat> What I'm going to go over today is how to confront our fears. And we all have fears. I mean, no one's immune. I have my fears. We all have insecurities. But in confronting our fear, what happens is that little voice that used to scare us starts to go away. So it could be a small little thing. And what we try to do is put a lot of energy on top of it of, uh, I'm not really scared. I'm not afraid. Uh, you're pretending that something's not happening that is. And it takes a lot of energy to create a cover-up story. Or in other words, it takes a lot of energy to create a lie. The truth is, you're afraid and I'm afraid. And we have a choice to continue to run or to finally confront it. So if you watch one of my other two videos, uh, The Observer and The Observer Part 2, um, this will make a lot more sense to you. So it's, a, it's, it's scary to confront our fears, but what you need to do is become aware and create that distinction that you're you listening to that voice that's attempting to scare you. So in doing so, what I recommend is when you feel the fear voice come on, go to a place that's kind of quiet, you know, somewhere alone by yourself. You can't have anyone else face your fears. Just like a bully, at some point in time, you're going to have to face up to the bully and make a stand for yourself. And that's kind of what fear is like. It's like a bully in your own head. So you sit there with it and just listen to it. And what I did one day was just decide that I'm going to sit in a room with it. And I'm just going to listen and see what it has to say. And I decided I wasn't going to run no matter what. I wasn't going to get up. I wasn't going to go, you know, occupy my mind, turn on the radio get on the internet, watch a book, uh, read a book, watch TV. I was going to sit with my fear and kind of let it talk crap to me and not move. And what you'll find is the voice tries to get you to go up in emotions. If you continue to listen to it and go, that's interesting. Hmm, that's, I'm not moving. And eventually the voice calms down and goes away. And the great news is what happens after you go through that and finally confront your fear, it's like confronting that bully that you had in your life. Something opens up for you. You feel a lot more stronger, a lot more confident as a human being. And then that strength opens up other areas of your life. So there's a, uh, a guy by the name of Joseph Campbell who says, everything that you want is inside the cave of fear. Two choices. Complain, blame others the rest of your life, or go into that cave, that little voice that scares you, and sit with it and confront it. On the other side is magic. On the other side is your freedom. On the other side is everything you ever wanted. So, <clears throat> uh, one book I would recommend um, to help you out with language would or how you talk to yourself would be Susan Jeffers book is feel the fear and do it anyway and Jeffers uh, talks about that every person who's ever done anything wonderful or great in this world we all have fear and you'll first hear the voice go I can't I can't do it and that's not true because everyone has a choice and a more empowering statement for yourself is I won't do it so I won't, you can then go to the next level, which is, I could do that. And then you go to, I can do that. 
and the most empowering is, I got this. I got this. So I highly recommend that book if you're having a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear. Uh, you have a couple choices. I go over these things uh, with my patients in my practice because a lot of physical pains are actually anxieties that are going on in the back of our head. They're not in your conscious awareness. Just like you can only see the tip of the iceberg, you, you can't really tell what's going on in the back of your head. So if you're not sleeping well, you have some pain that won't go away, a lot of times it's an anxiety, a fear that is not being addressed and it's just occupying your mind in your subconscious mind. And when it does come up, it gives you an opportunity to address it. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.